within the municipality of Amsterdam. So why look at incentives and motives for taxi drivers to switch? Um, well, it was already given away this morning a little bit, um, but this is because uh, the municipality of Amsterdam wants to uh, have a zero emission taxi fleet by the year 2025. That means that the approximately uh, 4,000 taxi drivers that are currently working within the municipality have to switch to a full electric vehicle. Um, so in order to facilitate this switch, um, the uh, municipality is offering uh, certain incentives, <laughs> certain rules and subsidies to um, make drivers make the switch. So they have a subsidy, for instance. They have a priority incentive at a taxi stand. I will elaborate a little bit more about that in a minute. Um, they improve the charging infrastructure, primarily, primarily fast charging, um, and they have a low emission zone. Um, so one of these incentives is the priority incentive. Um, I've done a little bit of research on the priority incentive, which I will present here. Um, the incentive is in effect at the taxi stand at the central station. Um, this is an image of the, of the taxi stand. It's situated here at the bottom. Um, so the taxi stand was opened in October 2015. Um, and the priority rule, uh, the priority incentive, basically states that out of every four taxis that drive up to the pickup point, which is highlighted there in purple, one taxi has to be a clean taxi. So the municipality defines a clean taxi as either a full electric vehicle, a plug-in hybrid electric vehicle, or a natural gas vehicle. Um, so I will briefly take you to the, uh, through the taxi stand so that you get an idea of how this incentive works. Um, so drivers that drive up to the taxi stand will face uh, the barrier first and they will have their uh, license plate scanned which also registers the type of vehicle. Um, then they will have to wait in the waiting area, which uh, I think houses approximately 22 taxis. Um, four of these waiting spots are reserved for full electric vehicles, where two fast chargers are present. Um, and then eventually, they will be signaled by the electronic board at the end of the waiting area. Um, uh, where they will be signaled by their license plate to drive up to the pickup point here, which is basically on a first in, first out. Um, so at the opening of the taxi stand in October 2015, there was a one to four ratio, which means that out of every four taxis that drive up to the pickup point, you get the passengers, one has to be a clean taxi. Um, but as we noticed uh, through data analysis, um, slowly and steadily, this clean vehicle fleet was growing. So at a certain point, I think it was somewhere um, after summer 2016, one out of every four taxis waiting at the stand was already a clean taxi. So the priority incentive lost its effect. That's why, starting this month, it will be adjusted to one to three, um, so that these clean vehicles um, have a better advantage and uh, thus should be um, at the pickup point more regularly. Um, eventually, somewhere this year, this will be adjusted again, uh, since we expect the clean vehicle fleet to grow. At least that's the intended purpose. Um, and that means that in January 2018, so a year from now, it will be 100% clean. This, this means that uh, plug-in hybrids and natural gas vehicles will also still be able to visit the taxi stand. And the end result will be a full electric taxi stand in the year 2021. Um, so uh, I ventured out to the uh, taxi, taxi stand in order to interview the taxi drivers themselves and to see how they perceive the incentive. Um, was it useful for them? Did they um, notice anything? Did they notice any changes? Um, and basically, is this, among other reasons, uh, one of the things um, that they find attractive, that, that makes them want to switch to an electric vehicle? Or, or is it attractive for those that have already switched to an electric vehicle? Was it something they took in consideration? Um, so in order to do this, uh, I conducted semi-structured interviews with 17 taxi drivers. Um, they all had different uh, vehicles, so I got to, uh, got to talk to uh, the four different groups that are currently existing. Um, they were all uh, part of a so-called approved taxi organization. Um, and they, um, well, I will tell you something about the drivers in a bit. Um, they frequently uh, visited Central Station. Uh, it's basically the same group of drivers. If you uh, stand at Central Station for half a day, you will see a lot of the same faces coming in and coming out. Um, they experience more customers here than elsewhere, and that's very important. This is a very 
uh, big taxi stand. They have a lot of customers. Um, it's the favorite taxi stand of a lot of these drivers. Uh, but funny enough, the rides they receive are fairly short. They mostly go to the inner city, and the revenue is between 15 to 20 euros. So um, since these rides are so short, they are back at the taxi stand fairly quick. Um, but the new stand also leaves them sort of dissatisfied. Um, with the renovation in October 2015, the stand moved from the front of the station to the back end of the station. Um, and they feel less visible. They feel that there are uh, less customers than before. So that's also influencing the atmosphere at the taxi stand itself. Um, so if we then look at the priority incentive, um, at the time uh, of the interviews, the 1 to 4 ratio was still in effect, so that was about to be adjusted. So it was interesting to see if they experienced the same things that we found in the data analysis. Is there indeed a growing clean vehicle fleet? And if so, does this mean that they experience less, um, less advantage than we thought? And that was indeed the case. A lot of the uh, full electric drivers and plug-in hybrid drivers um, experienced less advantage uh, uh, they were actually avoiding the taxi stand altogether, especially if they noticed that a lot of other clean vehicles were already at the taxi stand. Um, and those with a conventional vehicle, on the other hand, they experienced the incentive as unfair. It was unfair competition. They had no say in this. Uh, they saw the clean vehicle fleet grow, and it was sort of a competition. So then I asked, OK, what if the incentive is going to be adjusted to one to three? How is this going to influence you? Um, so the clean vehicle drivers, not surprisingly, um, support this adjustment. Uh, they will visit the taxi stand more often. Um, they do realize that their individual advantage might decrease because the clean vehicle fleet will automatically grow, or at least that's, um, that will be the result, that the intended result of this measure. Uh, and again, those with a conventional vehicle uh, have the idea that um, they're sort of trapped. They still want to visit this taxi stand. They uh, feel that they have get a lot of customers here. Um, they don't really have anywhere else to go, but they still see the unfair competition growing. Um, and when it gets 100% clean in 2018, those with the clean vehicle all said that they were going to attend the taxi stand. So if I discuss the priority incentive with the drivers, uh, there is a general discontent, um, primarily among those with a conventional vehicle right now. Um, for instance, um, I drive a van. There's no electric alternative for a van, so what am I going to do? Uh, do I have to give up my van? Are there no longer going to be vans in the taxi uh, industry here in Amsterdam? Um, why exactly is a, a plug-in hybrid marked as clean? All I see is a, are Toyota Priuses. They have a range of 35 kilometers. They have just as much admission as I do. So why are these clean? And then again, those with a hybrid vehicle say, I can charge here. This is a fast charger. It's not compatible. So what you see is a lot of um, discontent, which comes from the fact that they do not know what to do with the, um, with the priority incentive, and they, are, uh, they, have, they lack information about the incentive as well. So then if we look at the reasons to switch to an electric vehicle, um, this is the result. Um, so for the fully electric drivers, these are the reasons, or at least the positive reasons, why they switch to their vehicle. Um, and for the other two groups, this is what they find attractive in adopting a full electric vehicle. So there are several things really interesting here. The first thing is that the priority incentive uh, was listed by all drivers as a very positive aspect of driving a full electric vehicle. For those that already drove a full electric vehicle, this was actually the main reason to purchase this vehicle. Um, like I said before, this is a group of drivers that frequently visits the taxi stand at Central Station. So they actually built um, they actually bought the taxi to, to, to be here more frequently. Um, this was also the case for the, those with a, a different clean vehicle, with the plug-in hybrids and the natural gas vehicles. They also bought their clean vehicle to make use of this priority incentive. Um, and for those that did not drive a clean vehicle, um, the priority incentive was still very attractive, a very attractive reason to buy um, a clean vehicle and a uh, full electric vehicle specifically. Um, and then on the other hand, the smaller range was considered to be um, a negative aspect of buying a full electric vehicle. Um, but the thing is that um, the smaller range was perceived differently by the uh, different groups. So for those with a conventional vehicle, this was really a showstopper because you have to turn away customers if they want to drive a, um, a certain distance and uh, outside of the range of the full electric vehicle. Um, charging during a long ride is, is not something they can think of. Um, 
that's not something you do. Um, but for those that already drive a full electric vehicle, this is just a minor inconvenience. Because if you look at charging, then uh, the full electric vehicle drivers actually know where to find the charging points, the fast charging points, um, and they charge fairly regularly and do not really have an issue with charging. So they charge basically at home, uh, when they get home after a day of work at a public charging point. They use the fast chargers uh, in the city, as well as the fast chargers at the taxi stand. Um, they were very well used, considered to be somewhat expensive, um, but they only needed to charge for a short amount of time, so they never skipped a call um, to drive up to the pickup point while they were charging. Um, but they all agreed that an expansion of the charging infrastructure would be necessary if the full electric vehicle fleet would indeed grow. <coughs> so then the last point is that those that have already bought um, a full electric vehicle can think of numerous reasons to purchase one, um, or at least nu numerous uh, positive aspects of driving a full electric vehicle, while those that still have to switch can think of numerous reasons not to switch. So it's this last group, which is very interesting, and which is also the bulk. I think it's about, um, I think only 300 out of the 4,000 taxi drivers right now drive a clean vehicle. So this is a considerably, considerably large group. Um, so if we look at this group, this is what you'll hear. Um, it's, not, it's not only about uh, the technical uh, specifications, it's also about the image. Um, I'm not going to drive a Prius as a clean vehicle. I'm not going to drive a Nissan Leaf um, as a full electric vehicle. This is something that is not interesting to me. In every conversation, these taxi drivers compare a full electric vehicle with their own vehicle. What is my BMW or what is my Mercedes? Um, you know, that can offer me so much more than a Prius or a Nissan. What I would like to drive, though, is a Tesla. But nobody can afford a Tesla. So at this point, um, it's not only about technical difficulties, about the battery or the action reins. Uh, it's also about an image. And it's also financial. So um, what I found out is that during these talks, um, those with a conventional vehicle actually were in doubt. They were a little bit insecure. Um, insecure about their business case. Um, they were insecure about their own personal future as a taxi driver. You know, I, I do this for just a couple of years. What am I going to do after? Um, uh, how am I really going to make money out of this? Um, the number of registered taxi drivers is growing. They have increasing competition from Uber, for instance. Um, so they were contemplating their options. And that's basically what I list as either avoidance or adaptation. So avoidance would result um, in, in ultimately purchasing a full electric vehicle, um, maybe as a sort of safe intermediate option going for a plug-in hybrid. So you can still experience certain, um, certain incentives, such as the priority incentive, without actually buying a full electric vehicle, which is a lot more expensive. Um, and the avoidance options the drivers were talking about was uh, were either driving around the city, trying to pick up customers, or um, avoiding large taxi stands so that you can go to the smaller ones where, this, where these rules and regulations are less enforced or where uh, there won't, will be no enforcement at all. Um, or maybe trying to switch to Uber, which was also very interesting for a lot of drivers. Um, or just avoiding Amsterdam and maybe started working in Utrecht or Rotterdam. Um, so to summarize this, um, there are three conclusions. So the first is that the priority incentive seems to be very effective. Um, it was the main reasons for those with a full electric vehicle and those with a different clean vehicle to switch. Um, and it was and it is, um, uh, seen as very attractive for all the other drivers as well. Uh, the second is that those with a conventional vehicle still have a wide variety of options to avoid full electric adoption, which is why we should remove the, uh, certain adoption barriers um, that prohibit full electric vehicle adoption at this point, which is also what we're going to do in further research. We want to look at uh, other incentives. Um, there are already existing incentives. There might be new incentives to be developed uh, and to be assessed to see if this is really something um, uh, feasible to develop. We will look at adoption on a much larger scale, for instance, through surveys, um, to see if the reasons that I just listed are uh, shared among the taxi uh, drivers as a whole, and to see if we can come up with more reasons. And we will explore the business case to see the more financial aspect of the taxi drivers. Thank you. Thank you.